What's good, B-Sounds? It's your boy, Kit Kinraid, and today I want to share with you a recipe for a buff bolognese, as in a high-protein, low-calorie bolognese. We've got to make some substitutions, we've got to do a couple little clever tricks, but we will still end up with something that is delicious, something that you could basically eat every day if you wanted to, something high-protein, low-calorie, high-satiety value, very freaking delicious. Let's make it. All right, so the first weird thing we wanna do, and just stay with me here, is grill the beef. You will ideally be doing this from room temperature, so like an hour before you wanna make this, take your beef out of the fridge, and then stick it in a pan, stick it under the grill, or the broiler if you're American. Why? Good question. When you're dealing with a 20% fat mince, it is easy to brown the meat in a pan. When you are dealing with low fat, it is not easy to do that because one of the things that fat does is help transmit that heat into what you're cooking and obviously stop it sticking from your sticking to your pan. If we do it in the grill, you don't have to worry about it sticking to your pan because we're doing the top half. We can literally leave it under there as long as it takes for it to get browned. And because we're going from room temperature, we're gonna do a better job of rendering out the fat that's in it. If we were going from fridge cold, the heat wouldn't permeate. Whereas when we go from room temperature, the whole thing comes up to temperature a bit better and some of that fat will come down into the bottom of our pan, which will be very useful for the next step. So, beef, pan, grill. We also don't have to worry so much about overcrowding the pan. Like if you put a kilogram of beef in a frying pan and try and brown it, you're just gonna like make it sweat and that's not very pleasant either. So for this, so it solves all our problems. Probably gonna take a while, which is great because we have a whole lot of vegetable prep to do. You basically wanna cut up ahem, about six ribs of celery, about two red onions, you know, this size, regular, and about 400 grams of carrots, as small as possible. I can't remember what the French word is for it, but you know, bloody little not that big a deal. This is not by any means a traditional ratio of mise en place, but anything that you put tomatoes in, you might wanna put some sweetness in to sort of like, you know, balance it out. But if you can choose to either put sugar or honey in something to sweeten it up, or you put more carrots, which are kind of naturally sweet in there. You got one option where you put the honey in there and you can taste it, but physically there's no difference. Or another option where you put a bum load of carrots in there and it tastes sweeter, but there's also more volume. Why wouldn't you go for the more volume one? This ain't traditional, but I never said it was gonna be traditional. I said it was gonna be delicious, high volume, high protein, low calorie. And to that, I hold. Nice. Don't that pretty? Pretty? You look good, don't it? And in the time that it's taken us to do all of that, the beef is practically ready. Let's come a look. Look at that! We got browning and we also have liquid. I don't know if you can see, but like floating on the top of that liquid is little bubbles of fat, which is terrific because that's what we're gonna fry our uh, don't say it, don't say mise en place it. in. Colander over whatever your major cooking vessel is gonna be. Drain the beef. Now we're gonna bung a sort of half of this in the new pot, get it on some heat. Half of that on the old pot, get it on some heat. And we're just gonna try and fry those vegetables off in uh, whatever little amount of fat came out of that beef. Just to be clear, you don't have to do any of this. You can bung all this stuff in a slow cooker. It'll come out pretty good. But if you wanna get the very best out of what you can, which for me is always what I'm trying to do, you know, you got the amount of calories that you can eat. <laughs> you just wanna make it the things that you can eat the most delicious possible. That's what all these stupid steps are for. But if you just wanna wang a meal prep together, stick all this stuff in a slow cooker, you're done. So keep an eye on both of these, keep them moving. While we're doing that, we'll prepare the next thing. Oh, whack in a teaspoon of salt into each one of these pans. It's gonna help draw the moisture out of the vegetables. And onwards with the prep. Take a whole bulb of garlic and prepare it in whatever way you see fit. I like to chop the bottom off then get rid of all of the uh, skins and then chop through the whole lot. You might like to use a garlic press. I can't be asked to clean one. I'm also gonna use about 300 grams of peppers. That is not traditional. You could easily use mushrooms. Mushrooms would be a more traditional choice, but my girlfriend don't like mushrooms, so I ain't using mushrooms. But if you wanna use mushrooms, bro, 
Use mushrooms. Or, you know, if you want more volume for no calories, use both. Starting to get a good bit of fond appearing on the bottom of this pan. Just keep scraping it off the bottom, keep it moving around. If you know what fond is, I shall show you, or I'll do my best. See this like flavor that looks like stuff burnt to the bottom of the pan? That's gold, you want that. I'm gonna stick all of the vegetables back in that one pot, and I'm gonna save this pot. I like my bolognese to have a bit of something in there, you know, not quite as homogenous everything's one texture. So I'm gonna chop these up into longer boys, just so I can see there's something going on. The vegetables are now soft and looking good. The bottom definitely wants deglazing. Let's talk about one of the other problems. Usually you would start a bolognese with a high fat pork product. If you're in the UK, that probably means bacon. We don't have the luxury of that. So there are two things that I suggest. When it comes to the stock adding stage, get yourself a bacon or a ham or a pork stock cube. For some reason, they're impossible to find, but it does make a big difference. Two pork stock cubes, about 50 grams of tomato puree. Now what we're gonna do is this one pan that had the beef in that we grilled and then you know, has now some fond from the vegetables. We are gonna quickly cook the raw off the uh, puree and the garlic, and then we're gonna deglaze it with bacon stock. I need a water vessel, <laughs> sorry. So back on the heat, garlic and tomato puree go in there. Where the hell's my spatch? There it is. Shuffle it about, and it's literally gonna want just like a minute. Then we have to be careful because not having any oil, it's pretty easy to burn all this stuff. Be on there, man. There's two changes in smell that happens. And the first one is like, oh, it's good. And then the second one is like, oh, it's ruined. So wang that in there. And then we want to get all of that fond and flavor off the side. So we're going to chuck that in there. Literally just water. It's the water we're going to use to make the stock. Scrape down the sides of your pan. If you have a silicon spatula, now is a great time to use it. We wang that in with the rest of the vegetables, and now this pan is done. You can put that to be washed up, hopefully by someone else. Wang your beef back in, Badang. I honestly couldn't be asked to make the stock separately, so I just used water in that pan, and now I'm gonna stick the stock cubes in. Two tins of whatever kind of tomato product you like. Doesn't matter if it looks particularly dry right now. All of the vegetables that are in there are gonna give out all their water, including these peppers that have to go in there. Nice, nice, nice. It's gonna want another teaspoon of salt. About 15 good cranks of black pepper. Three bay leaves. One teaspoon of chili flake or crushed chilies. And one tablespoon oregano. Now there is one more strange thing that needs to go in this uh, and that's Marmite. If you're in the US, you have other options. Uh, I don't know if Marmite is a thing over there, but it is a yeast extract. Over here, we eat on toast and it's, it's really wild. It's a divisive subject, but I like it. A teaspoon of Marmite just adds to the beefy umami goodness of the dish. Not essential, but I recommend it. If you're in the States, no reason you couldn't use Worcester sauce. I guess you could use soy sauce if you really wanted to. It's my favorite spoon. Now I'll give that its last whirlful. And that's it, man. Simple. I'll show you what it looks like. And then we'll put it to bed. Well, I've left this now for about two and a half hours. You can let it go as long as you like. It's one of those things that just gets better the longer you leave it. It's gonna make four delicious meals. How delicious? Let's find out. It's gonna be hot as all balls. Mm. Mm. That's exactly what you want from a bolognese. <clears throat> all right, get this. If we're calling this four portions and they're four pretty big portions so you could make six portions if that's your thing. One quarter of this is 487 calories. 13.5 grams of fat, 33 grams of carbs, and 57.5 grams of protein. 
Sounds pretty good, man, doesn't it? Then, of course, you're gonna want a side. I really love pasta, man. So I tend to get a pasta that takes up a lot of space. Con conchingly, is that what they're called? Conchingly, I dig. Penne, I also dig. And then I'll do not quite a whole serving of that and half a head of broccoli, either steamed or roasted. That's a delicious filling meal. If you wanted to cut down the calories even more, you could just have a whole head of broccoli. Still delicious, wax and palm on top, damn! Some leeks and then cut them long ways into like ribbons. Let's be fair, it's not pasta, but it is a vegetable that kind of acts like pasta. Strips of courgette, I've done that in the past, that was pretty decent. So you gotta love options, you know, if you've got the cows, cheese and pasta, Great if you don't have the cows, courgette, leeks, broccoli, that sort of thing. All good and, you know, still cheese because they do some pretty good low-fat cheeses. Palm is grand because, well, you don't need a lot of it, do you? Yes, we could probably go lower on the macros if we swap to, like, ground turkey or ground chicken. But at that point, are we eating a bolognese? No, it's life worth living if we just cook everything with chicken breast. No, so... Nah, man. I mean, you can. If you if that's something you want to do, yeah, go for it, but do it on your own time. <laughs> when I cook this, I tend to cook a jambalaya in the same week because it has a lot of very similar ingredients, so, you know, stuff doesn't go to waste. You can make two nights of bolognese, two nights of jambalaya, one lot of ingredients, nothing goes off which is, uh, you know, budget-friendly, time-friendly. It's good stuff. If you want to see that recipe, let me know down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this recipe, let me know down below. Drop us a like. And uh, as always, my friends, get them games. Be well.